Hey guys, this is Gene Jensen with BassResource.com. In my opinion, if you want to become the best fisherman you can possibly be, you've got to know how to read a topo map or how to read a lake map. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about how, you know, what are the different things you're looking at on a topo map, uh, what the contour lines mean. I'm going to talk about a bunch of things. So let's go ahead and get things started and, uh, and dive right into a map. All right, what I've got here is a lake map of Clarks Hill Lake. This is the lake I'm on right now. First thing you do when you get any map, whether it's a topo map or a road map or anything else, first thing you do is you look for the map key, or what this is called is map symbols. All right, I'm gonna bring the camera down here so you guys can see that. And you look at this and it'll tell you what each of these little symbols means. You know, this right here, that right there is your river channel or your main channel. And then these little uh, dot, dot, dash, dot, 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 dash, this uh, SOS sign, anyway. <laughs> Not really. But um, it's uh, that's your creek channel that runs right up the middle of, of a draw, okay? And you got islands and humps and things like that. We'll talk about that here in just a second. But that's the first thing you do is you look at your contour map or your, uh, the key of your map and and figure out what some of the symbols are you're going to be seeing as you're studying this map, what they mean. In order for me to be able to teach this, I've got, I've got a, uh, a dry erase board and some dry erase markers. So I'm going to uh, bring the camera down to this dry erase board and I'm going to draw out some of the things that you're going to be looking for on the map, you know, some of the, the key places that hold fish. All right, so first thing is, the first thing I do when I go to a new lake is I look for main lake points, um, depending on the time of the year. If it's the, uh, if it's the spring, I'm looking for spawning flats, and then I'm working my way out of the creek channel and, and fishing points on there. But the first thing I always look for is I want to find a good point, especially in the summertime. All right. First of all, a contour line. And the fish are schooling behind me. You see these lines on a contour map. These are called contour lines. Some maps, they're five foot intervals. Some maps, they're 10, some 20, some 30. Uh, you want it to be the lowest numbers you, you can get, okay? So in, in, in this map, I'm gonna say it's, a, it's one foot intervals just for, for uh, teaching purposes, okay? Start off, this is a point. Okay, it can go way out here and so on and so forth. But uh, you start off and this is the, this is the, uh, the land and then all this is water. So you've got one foot deep, two feet, three feet, four feet, five feet, six feet, seven feet deep. It goes all the way out. This is a point. You can see how if this was a three-dimensional image, it would look like this. And I'll come up here and I'll throw a Carolina rig or a crankbait or a jig or something and I'll drag it off of this point. Um, I like a spinnerbait for a search bait and things like that. And I'll just, I'll stay out here and I'll fish at all different angles and throw up into this point onto this point okay all right and you now if you're looking at a, a topo map and you see circles usually associated with a, a point somewhere anyway okay they're not going to be as pretty as these circles <laughs> but uh this is a hump you can, you can Kind of see as in a, if it was a 3D, three dimensional image, the land would slope up and come up and it'd be a, a hump. On mainland, on the mainland, we call this a hill. But when it's underwater, we call it a hump. Okay, and so you've got a, um, you know, one foot, two foot, three foot, four foot, five foot deep hump. Now, the land, this also shows something else. The land between the, uh, the point and the hump, this little spot right here, you know, it's it's called a saddle. If you're looking at the mainland on a regular map, like when I learned map reading in the army, we called it a saddle. Uh, under the water, we call it a draw, or you'll call it. Um, there's several different names. The lake that I'm on right now, Clark's Hill, we call it a blow through if it's a shallow, uh, a shallow draw, because the wind will blow across and the fish will position themselves right here with the wind blowing this way, and it'll blow bait fish across that saddle, and they're sitting there eating it, you know, feeding on it. Uh, recently, in the, actually right now, it being summertime, I've been finding the fish in these saddles deep, you know, 15, 20 foot deep saddles. 
I haven't been able to catch any because for some reason they're not eating, but I know they're there. I see them on my depth finder. Okay. All right. Now, this is a pocket or a cove or, you know, I'm going to try to try to draw it. It's going to look a lot like a point. But instead of this being the land, this is all the land. Okay? So this is shallow water, this is deep water. And on a map, you might see a line going up in there. That's your creek channel. You'll see it all the way out as deep as it'll go and uh, that's kind of what you're looking for if the fish are holding down the creek channel this is your highway um, the main you know you got your main body of water that has the river channel and then a creek channel and that's your highway that's what uh, the bait fish will travel up and down and that's what the the, the fish will try the largemouth will travel up and down chasing the bait fish really good place to fish but very difficult when it gets out deep Let's talk about a flat. Okay, each of these contour lines, the further apart they are, the flatter the land. So the closer they are, the, the steeper it is. So say for instance, I've got a point that looks like this, very steep point, and all of a sudden you start seeing contour lines do this. This is a flat point, not, you know, this is well, like one foot interval, so that's a one foot change in this amount of distance, and one foot change in this amount of di distance. It's a very flat point, and what I love is, is long flat points that look like this. Okay, so some people might call this a flat, some people may call it a, you know, a, a very lightly sloping point. But if you're looking for a flat, say you're coming, this is your mainland. It lands over here, and you see a contour line come out like this, and a contour line come out like this, and all of a sudden, you got a contour line way out here, and a contour line way out here. Here's your flat. This is where grass grows. This is where there's stumps. There's where, you know, a lot of different places, and if there's good current or there's good bait fish in the area, the bass will be positioned on the stumps. I'll come in here with a crankbait or a spinnerbait or a Carolina rig or something that I can hit these stumps with. Okay, they're not going to be that pretty, <laughs> but uh, anyway, that's one of the things that I love to do is fish a grass flat or a, or a stump flat. All right, let's talk about what a, oops, let's talk about what a secondary point is. Okay, say for instance, I've got a point that looks like this. All this is underwater. You can see this on a map. You can see the land coming out to it, so you know that's a point, but you don't know that there's another point that comes off of that point, okay? This thing may come way out here. This is a secondary point. Primary point, or main lake point, secondary point. Some people will also call the smaller points that are, you know, coming off of the bank, like if you're, you got your land right here, you just got a little small point that comes out. doesn't come out very far, and then it's just gone. Some people will call that a secondary point as well. So keep that in mind when you're reading about it. This may be what they're talking about. All right, as I was saying, when these contour lines are very close together, it's a steep drop-off. Okay. And all of a sudden, they start getting further apart. All right, this steep drop-off, if this is the land, this steep drop-off is what we call a bluff wall. All right, let me change the color. This is all land. And starting from actually out of the water, going straight down, if it's a straight drop, that's a bluff wall. And at the bottom of the bluff wall, a lot of times you'll find rock piles and things like that that'll hold fish that come up just a little bit higher. Uh, the fish will be positioned on those rock piles. They'll be positioned halfway up the bluff wall if there's like a, a rock that broke out of it or things like that. Little places for them to hide, they'll be along that bluff, that bluff wall. Really hard, hard to fish if they're on the wall, but if they're at the bottom, you can usually catch them on a drop shot or something like that. Okay. Now a ledge. 
the ledge is ex I can explain the ledge ex you know as, ex as exactly the, what it's what it's stated you've got a you got your contour lines coming out here and then all of a sudden they get really close together okay and then there's a space and then they get really close together again another space and really close together this is two two ledges one here and one there so what happens is it's coming along actually three ledges one two three comes along here and a ledge is right where it's the top of where it starts to drop off really fast so you have a, a flat spot and then a drop off and then a flat spot and a drop off and a flat stop spot and it drops off again each of these flat spots are ledges and the bass will position themselves a lot of times right on the lip of that ledge so they can attack what's coming out deep and what's coming up shallow. It's a nice little place for them to ambush uh, prey. So I'm going to throw up on that ledge. I'm going to throw along the you know along parallel to it or anything else, and uh, and see what I can get those fish to hit. All right, now say for instance, well, it could be anything, but I saw one the other day that this is what I'm talking about. You've got the uh, you've got the river channel. I'm trying to draw this really fast. Okay, that's the main river channel. Um, then you see what you see on the map is you see some red dashed lines or any you know coming across with a okay and all that's underwater what you have here is you have a road bed and the reason a road bed is so nice is because a road bed is usually hard bottom and it's usually little ledges on both sides of them and things like that it's another travel route for the bass to go from deep water to shallow water this is a bridge, a submerged bridge. A lot of times if you see a roadbed crossing a creek channel and there's no bridge marking, you'll still find par parts and pieces of a bridge. Maybe they blew it up and maybe it's in little rubble places around here. Maybe it's just, uh, you know, maybe they just didn't put it on the map and it's still there or the pilings are still be, going to be there. There's going to be something there that holds fish, depending on the depth. It could be too deep, it could be too shallow for the time period of the year. But... It's always good to try to fish the the road the roadbed and the bridge associated with it. You may also see a roadbed coming up, up a point. Okay. And there may be another road that comes off of that point that way, stuff like that. Look for those things. Bass use them to go up and down and go up and down the point and things like that. Um, let me do something really quick before I end this video. Let me show you this. Okay, because I love fishing points so much. A lot of times you'll see a point that looks like that. You got a shallow side of the point and you got a steep deep side of the point okay so it goes i mean it's almost a straight drop off ledge these fish will hang out right here a lot whether it's this is the main lake or this is the main lake they'll hang out here a lot and they like to use this steep steep side to get up onto this point so i'm going to focus most of my attention on this side of the point and right on the very tip top of it um, I may throw make a few casts over here if there's like a stump or a brush pile or a rock pile or something But mainly I'm just going to focus right here on this this side of the point. That's just me a lot of uh, bass fishermen will tell you something different, but uh, I've, I've always found that I catch more fish on the steep side than I do on the on the shallow side But uh, but that's a good start um, And get this thing to stop rocking I hope that helps you um at least get started reading topo maps. Go out there, study them. Try to figure out uh, the the, uh, the the association between your topo map and your and your uh, GPS map on your on your fish finder or your topo map and what you see on your fish finder. Uh, some of the small lakes, some of the newer ones, don't have topo maps. But what I found is if you go online to the U.S. Geological Survey's uh, website, something like that, and look at the old topo maps uh, that when it was just dry land, 
a lot of times that'll help you out and help you find uh, little places on that small lake. There's, there's, uh, you just got to do your research. The pros when they go going when they're going to a new lake, they'll pick up five, six, seven, eight, diff eight, nine different types of maps, as many as are available, and they'll actually study all of them. And the reason they do that is, uh, is because each map will show something different. Some maps will show a roadbed, and other maps won't show that roadbed. Some maps will, you know, show uh, more con, you know, uh, a more detailed contour lines, things like that. There's good company, and there's and they're bad. There's bad companies, but each lake has a different good company and a different bad company. So uh, the best way I can say it, or good maps and bad maps. So. Um, I hope you can take this and it'll help you learn a little bit more about how to locate fish on the lake. Learn how the fish um, associate themselves to the structure that you that you find on a lake map, and uh, and you'll find yourself being a a, a, a lot more exp or a lot more successful fisherman. Like I always say, visit BassResource.com for the answer to all your questions about bass fishing, and have a great day. There we go. Texas rig. What a fun little rig to fish. Like I said, it's one of the oldest ones out there. And the bass still eat it. <laughs>